prayer. Father God, we completely submit to you, Lord. Yeah. Totally. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us today, Father. Yeah. I thank you and I praise you for everyone who gathered here. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we all know, we are going through parables, parables about Jesus that he spoke and taught. So we are going through each of those parables. Today we are going to be going through a parable called Friend in Need. Or some of you might want to say Friend at Midnight. Uh, it is in Luke chapter 11. And uh, let's get into that. Lift up your hand if you have any kind of need today. Most of you do, some of you don't. Thank, thank God for those people who uh, we don't have a need. <laughs> if, since you have a need, you are in the right place. Amen. Because Father God in heaven is going to meet your need today. Amen. You believe that? Yes. Do you truly, truly believe that? Amen. Do you have faith that God will meet your need today? Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, Philippians chapter 4, 19 says, My God, my Father shall supply all my need according to His riches in glory, not our riches, His riches. Right. He's the one who created the entire world. He's the one who owns it. So His riches is beyond any of the super rich people of this world. Was probably about 100 billion dollars. His riches is unlimited, infinity to infinity, if you can understand it. that number. He's able to do more than, abundantly more than you can ask or think. That's right. Hallelujah. Philip Ephesians chapter 3 says that. So, in order to receive or achieve your need today, are you walking in faith? Or are you walking in silence? When you face a problem, do you try to resolve the problem according to the knowledge that you have? Or according to the abilities and the capabilities that you have in your life? If you're doing that, you're walking by sight. That's right. Walking by faith is completely a different thing. Walking by faith is trusting in God and leaning out, leaning not on your own understanding. That's right. Proverbs 3 5 says that. Mm. So today, are you willing to acknowledge your faith? Mm. And you acknowledge faith. Sometimes when stands up here, call for people for prayer, taking that step getting up from that seat and walking forward saying that Lord I have a need and I trust in you. Amen. Not on my own ability, not on my own capabilities, not on my own education or my finances to meet that need. I trust in you. Right. Just stepping in, even if you don't come up here, just stepping out from the aisle, standing on the, in the middle, even itself is showing that you are happy. If some of you don't have that faith today, let me tell you a story. In a Midwestern state years ago, there was drought. Drought was going on several years. You know, many of you probably heard this story. And the church of that town, the pastor of the church called for prayer. Everybody come on a Saturday evening for prayer. We're going to pray for rain because that's a problem. So he urged everybody. Come prepared in faith for a prayer. So Saturday evening, afternoon, people are going, walking to the church. This is the time nobody drove with our horses at that time. Here, one little girl, she has an umbrella in her hand, all folded up. People are wishing for that we haven't had any rain for three years. 
And somebody had the urge to ask me, why do you have an umbrella when it's so drowned and dust everywhere when you have an umbrella? Oh, the little girls have the best to say, come with faith. Amen. We want to pray. So we're going to get rain. So I'm prepared. Amen. That's right. That's right. Are you willing to display your faith? Right. Right. Even when difficulties arise in your life, even when you go through troubles and problems, when you think none of the things that you know about won't meet the need, are you willing to step out in faith? Amen. 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 It's a hard thing to do. It's not something like people go, it's not a rocket science. It's not something that you need PhD for. Stepping out of faith, God made it so simple. Trust in the Lord instead of trusting yourself. Praise God, hallelujah. Here, Luke 11 says, Jesus prayed. What did Jesus have to pray? Today, God himself came down on the earth. Why did Jesus need to pray? Jesus prayed. You know that voice that says that he got up so early in the morning, even before the sun rose, I think about three o'clock in the morning, he prayed until six, three hours. Before he chose the disciples, you know, he had spent the entire night in prayer. Do you know that? Why did he need to do this? He was setting an example for us. He was setting the seat in the will of the Father. When he was on the earth, he was 100% human. At the same time, he's on the person demon. He was praying from his human side to know the will of the Father. At the same time, he was showing an example, setting an example. We are trying to become in the image of Christ. So he is setting an example for you and I. Praise God, hallelujah. There's so many verses, I don't have time to get into all of that. But Jesus, chapter, John chapter 17 says that Jesus prays for himself. The entire chapter 17 of the Gospel of John is the prayer of Jesus. First he prays for himself because he knows what about to happen. Then he prays for his disciples. People are so close to him. Then he prays for us. The entire world of believers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus needed to pray and he separated himself all the time when he was praying. In the garden of Gethsemane, they all went and prayed. And Jesus said, you sit here and watch with me. He stepped aside a little bit further away and he was in agony. He was praying. Some of the best prayer that I experienced is his cross prayer by myself. Many times that happens while I'm driving. I just turn off that music, turn off the phone, and I just seek the Lord. You think that, you know, Bible says pray without ceasing. Continue. You think that I pray while you're driving? Yes, you can. You think you can pray? The word itself, the prayer, English language actually butchered it. The how we understand prayer nowadays is so different. The word pray in Greek language is actually, it's actually two words. Asking. A word pray means will, wish. And prayer is the, the, the Greek, the adjective right there is two word. Two word of wish, two word of will, two word of why. That's the actual meaning of the word pray. So we will so much don't understand about prayer, we think we do. I thought I did. Getting in deeper and deeper and deeper. Because a lot of things when we, the way that we pray, pray when we read everybody's prayer, I went and studied James, what he wrote in chapter 5, and I was so conflicted. What? I don't have no time to get into all of that. You know, we're starting at 
pretty soon, I guess uh, Pastor Dave will tell you or a uh, disciple series. Not in the church, this is going to be a class after. I guess I'm getting the cat out of the bag. Uh, it's going to be, you have to commit 90 minutes on a Sunday or something after church. You get it deeper. If you're really hungry to learn these kind of things, connect groups or these classes, disciples series will help you. Okay? So, here, Lord's Prayer, Jesus is starting. He said, the the thing here is what happens is that Jesus was praying and disciples are seeing this. He was doing miracles and all of that things. He was raising dead. But only one thing disciple ever asked them to teach as to pray. Lord teaches to pray just like John taught his disciples. Because they saw when he went to do miracles, how long did it take? Did it take like some of the preachers say, put the lay on the hand and they're like, you know, standing and they're praying 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, praying, praying. How long did Jesus stay to heal somebody, to drive out a demon, or raise the dead? He stood up in front of the cave, moved that stone, and said, Lazarus, come out. What a long prayer to raise somebody from. In order to say Lazarus probably took a long time to roll that stone up from the cave. But Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. How long did that take? 1.7 seconds? Wow, in order to raise a dead person, it took him 1.7 seconds. So disciple came to understand that is not the essence. How is he able to do something like that? So the longer time that he spent was praying. So they came to understand that's what is the most important thing. So told them to teach us to pray. So here Jesus is teaching them to pray. The same thing that we see in, in Matthew chapter 6 says, Father, Is that how you guys pray? Amen. Is it? Amen. If you are not calling Father as Father, if you are not addressing Him as Father, that means you have no relationship with Father God in heaven. Right. Amen. You are establishing when you go to your own Father, what are you saying? Abba, Daddy, you are calling Him. One of my cousins who lives in Minnesota all the time, he sends texts and he says, Papa, I'm in Papa's love. He doesn't call God as Father or you know any other name. He says, Papa. Do you have a special name yeah. for your dad? Then you have a special name for Father God. That is establishing, Jesus is establishing his relationship by calling him, addressing him, Father. Keep my name, his name, holy. Yes, Dad. He's not telling Father God to keep his name holy. His name is holy. He doesn't need to keep it. His name is holy. Amen. So what does that mean? Hallowed be thy name. He's addressing to himself, whoever is praying, right. Lord, enable me right. or strengthen me right. to keep your name holy throughout this day. Come on, God. Come on, God. Tell it. It's your job to do that. Hallelujah. Not God's job. It's our job. Make sure every decision that you make today and tomorrow and coming days, Amen. make sure God's name. Grow up, holy. That's right. That's right. Thank right. you, Holy Spirit. Your kingdom come. Yeah. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your kingdom. How? What do you mean, your kingdom? God already sent His kingdom. Jesus right. said, "Your kingdom is among you." Jesus. So how does He? You're still praying. Your kingdom comes every situation, every problem, everything that you face. 
you have the understanding, you have, you can question me about the Lord. In this situation, your kingdom is here. Why? Because I am here. That's right. Yes. Because he said, every word, every place that you put your foot. The presence of God is there. That's right. The kingdom of God it is in every situation that you are facing. Correct. Yes. You will be done. Same thing. Yes. You will be done in every situation that I'm in. Yes. Right. I have seen, I walked into a problem when my staff is standing there, four or five of them standing there, they know what to do. Some of them are more experienced. I walk in, and first thing they do, the problem see comes on like a sore thumb. Why? It's not because of my abilities or capabilities or knowledge. Because the belief that is in me, every place I'm about to step right. to, the problem will come evident and we'll be able to solve it. Amen. And you know what? If I become like at that situation, like Michael Jackson's glove. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the glove became so famous. That is okay. I am the guy glove. Everybody notices the glove. But God's hand is inside. He's operating, he's leading, he's guiding me. Yeah. Praise God, hallelujah. All of these are like, you know, you can just stay here for hours. Praise God. Praise then he says, give us our daily needs. Ooh. Mm. I wish I had time to stay here. Oh, you think that we are asking God the Father. He said everything. You're not asking God. To give us our daily need. No, no, no. Daily need does not it just include bread, the things that we need, everything that we need, all of our provisions. No, let me tell you, it is not, we are not asking God. You want to find out? I guess no. Okay. Now <laughs> move on. Says, forgive. If you want to find out, come to that class. <laughs> forgive. You know, it is itself as a whole. I would, if I open it up and I'm going to confuse you, I don't want to do that because I don't have time to go into that. So go to that class. If I get a chance, I will explain to you. Your prayer life will change totally. Uh, forgive our sins. It's not sin. It's not sin. S I N. Sin, the capital S, sin. It's not that. That is already forgiven on the cross. This is forgive our sins. Every English translation, the second part of that word, as we forgive other people. No, it's not. There, who those who are in debt to us. So it's a different, it's a sin, the, the symptoms of sin. Praise God, hallelujah. So after he says that, That's the one says, let us not into temptation. You know, God does not tempt us. I want to say that, you know, James chapter 1, it says, verse 13, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot tempt it by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. The verse is up there. You know where the temptation comes. It says right there. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then desire, conceived, gives birth to sin. Then sin, when it's fully grown, leads to death. So now he gets into the parable. This is where the parable starts. Jesus says, here, any of you suppose you have a friend. At midnight, you go to the friend. And one of borrow three loaves of bread. Living in this situation, this time of the century or this environment, we don't need to worry about. Anyway, who would come to your home without an announcement? Would anyone? At least today, they'll send you a text. I'm on my way. <laughs> and we send it right back. Make sure you get the food. The dust is open. Seven Eleven is right there. Nobody comes hungry and they're coming so late. <laughs> That's not the situation. I know when I was growing up as a child in India, uh, you know, I see my mother, when somebody's coming here, they're running next door. 
of sugar, coffee, and milk, or whatever, we didn't have a refrigerator when I was a young boy. Imagine that. How do we live without a cell phone? <laughs> All of these things here, and the friend is coming, so well, the next verse that he says here, and he answers, the friend answers, don't bother me, I'm sleeping, I'm in bed with my kids. And because Jesus himself says here, the next slide it says that I tell you, Jesus is saying this, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of your friendship, he's saying, just because your friend is not going to give it to you. Because of your shameless audacity, you keep knocking, you keep knocking, you keep knocking, please, please, I beg you, give me. He's actually admitting his lack. He's actually admitting that he is his weakness. He's actually admitting that I am never prepared. He's shameless. Audacity that he has, and then he so because of that, Jesus is saying, Your friend, so called friend, will get up and give you what you need. So the next words here comes the contrast. People actually have heard many messages about this thing. They miss this point. Jesus isn't talking about prayer like a human being prayer. Jesus isn't talking about prayer of a being so persistent so you will get, God will give you, if you annoy God enough, He will give you what you need. No, Father God isn't like that. I don't think uh, any of you fathers or mothers, your kid needs to, oh, sometimes you will see that. It's mommy, 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 mommy. Oh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> here you go, get something. But in here, you don't need to get up to that level. Something that your children need, you will give it to them just by asking. Right? They don't need to annoy you. This is what the human being says, does, says, says annoy, annoy, annoy your neighbor enough. He will give it to you. Jesus is saying, no, that is a contrast from the parable. He's saying, ask, he will give it to you. See, you will find. Now, the door will be open to you. Our time needed to explore all of these. And Jesus is actually solidified by saying the next words for everyone who asks, he's saying he's promising, everyone who asks will receive everyone who knocks, sees, will find and he says everyone, the one the one who knocks and the door will be open praise God hallelujah And he goes on to say, if, the next slide will say that, which of you fathers, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a snake instead? Or he asked for an egg, he'd give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts your children, how much more your father in heaven? See the contrast? Now the last part, whenever you go, how many people actually remember praying, Lord, I need Holy Spirit, I need Holy Spirit. No, we pray, Lord, I need that will be, I need healing for this sickness, I need that need, I need this need, 
I need a new job, I need a promotion, I need a better car, I need this, I need that. That's what most of our prayers are, right? 99% of our prayers are this. List of needs. Needs. There are wants. And then there is another one. Desire. My wife often asks, <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> And my children comes and asks something, she says, is that a need or a want? It's very poignant to ask, and the kids begin to think, what does that mean? So they know, they understood, she explained to them before. So there is a need which you need, we all need. In order to sustain life, we need food. Right? We need to go get food. We need air which God has given to us. And one thing else, we need everything that is free. Right? Everything. Just like God, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, everything. You know, spirit, mind, and body, everything. What is the third thing? We need food, we need air, we need water. Right? This is needed. That is the need. Clothes we need. You know, vehicles we need. Money to pay the bills we need. How many people pray for a million dollars? Five. Five. Five million? Five. Okay. For inflation. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> you haven't paid for a million dollars? Who hasn't? That's a desire. We don't pay that all the time. How many people pray for, uh, instead of $30,000 car, I get a $50,000 car? Maybe 25, 30,000 is a need. $50,000 is what we consider what? One. But, Psalms 37 says, anybody know the words? What's the words in Psalms 37? Oh, I pray this thing. Because I have asked for millions. Delight yourself also in the Lord and the active thing is what? Active things, you're breathing in. That's active. Passive is what? Active is they like you in the Lord. Passive, He will give you, give you desires. desires. You don't want to say it, huh? Because you're afraid to say it. Oh, I am. Even though I ask for a million dollars, I don't want to delight myself in you, Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of the Lord. Your heart's desire, that's God's heart's desire. Delight. So today onwards, you're going to pray and you're going to ask the Lord for your needs and what is God is going to give you. It's just right there. Come on, guys. He's going to give you what, Josh? The Holy Spirit. Thank you. Somebody's paying attention. <laughs> he's going to give you, you ask for needs, He's going to give you Holy Spirit. Amen. What? I didn't ask for Holy Spirit. Why is He giving me Holy Spirit? <laughs> wow. Have you heard the Psalms 23? Psalm 23 says, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Holy Spirit is with me. And his rod and his staff will comfort me. He will prepare table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
he will anoint my head with oil. Yes. Amen. What's the next word? Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not, I'm not asking goodness come to me, goodness come to me, goodness. No, 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 no. Goodness and mercy here. Yeah. It's like a, you know, my wife comes home all the time. Our dog Cody always follows around. I told her this morning you should maybe put a, you know, a step meter on him. He will have more meters. He's always walking behind him. <laughs> and I was like, oh yes, that is goodness and mercy. Follow you all the days of your life if the Holy Spirit is in you. If the Holy Spirit is in you. Goodness, every place you go, goodness. Every situation, as soon as you walk into a problem, mercy. As soon as you go to a place, goodness. I walk into a store and I say, store and two or three people, when I'm about to walk out, 40 people in the store. Goodness. Every place I go, the place is blessed. Goodness. Can you believe that? Yes. That's why. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. Right. Holy Spirit is in you because he's you. Wherever he, you become, your body becomes his feet. Your, your hand becomes right. his hand. That's right. Your thoughts become his thoughts. Right. Your, your mouth becomes his mouth. Right. Yes. When you walk, be not drunk with wine. Right. Right. We can all do that so easy. Right? What is Paul telling us? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. If I drink this water, I quench my thirst. We are all sitting here with Holy Spirit inside of us. Right? Inside. Quenched our thirst. We got born again. Oh, that's not what I'm just talking about. We are all born again here, right? Amen. You all call Jesus the Lord, right? So you are born again. Amen. Now, there is another level called baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the water is in me. I'm not thirsty. Remember, I jump in. Now, many people don't know. How many people swam in the uh, river? I have, I learned to swim. I learned my swimming. And I was a, a young boy, about six years old. I went to learn singing. And we went, I hang out with a big kid, 19, 18, 19, 20 years old. Oh, you want to learn swimming? Here you go. He carried me, threw me into the water. I don't know how to do it. I'm like cocking my hand, moving my leg, and everything here. I'm about to drown, and he jumped in and rescued me. You want to learn swimming? Yeah, but not like that. <laughs> Get into the water. Learn swimming very fast. Now imagine if you're swimming, I'm almost ending here. If you're swimming in the water, say that the, the, the flow of the water is so powerful, no matter how much you try to swim, what's going to happen? You're just going to go with the flow. Right. Yes, you're struggling, you try to swim a bay, we're not fish, we are human beings, right? I see in the last, uh, in our like uh, salmons, very good salmon, very expensive, they swim up the river. They have the strength to do that. When we are in the water, the flowing water, we're going to go with the flow. When you are being baptized the Holy Ghost, it's like you're in that water. Hmm. Right. You jumped into that river. And you're surrounded by this water. And the Holy Spirit has a direction you want to go. No matter if you try to swim against this, you're going to go in the direction of the Holy Spirit. That is being completely, you're seeking totally. What I'm about to do, I'm completely surrounded by Holy Spirit. Therefore, I'm going to go with the flow. Though Spirit is going to tell me what to do. He's going to tell me what to say. Because majority of this message, I just made it up like that. So I know I didn't do it. I was telling that to Vince and I know he's prayed for me. He just came, flowed out of me. I did not say it. I can take the credit for it. 
had so many verses I wrote down, I only went through about two pages of it, and there were seven pages left. No time. <laughs> Please go learn what Holy Spirit, there are 70 or 80 things that Holy Spirit does for us when you are in baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes upon us for particular ministries. Today, if you have any need, any need at all, do not go out of here without showing with faith. God bless each and every one.